confirm again that you can hear me well. Can you hear me well? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so today is, um, let's see, we share my screen. And um, so um, today we are going to be discussing evaluation, something that you already like have uh, some understanding about. So, um, so we're going to be, so let's just maybe like the title of the session has changed. So let me share like the slides. So uh, we're going to be talking about evaluating prompts and a rack system. So these are like two different parts, but they share, there are like shared the, um, uh, okay, so there are some shared um, parts be between the two. So, uh, okay. So let me hear from you. Like, um, so this is this, the tutorial, but um, so let me hear from you first. Like, um, what what do you know? How how do we go about evaluating a rack system or evaluating prompt? Um, like, yeah, I mean, in the in light of the challenge of this week, like you have already maybe read about it um, in the challenge document or like in the references. So let me know. What, what do we mean by evaluating a prompt? What do we mean by evaluating a rack system? And if you know how to go about, about doing that. Okay. Any volunteers? Let's take two people. Um, minute so i mean just your understanding of the thing No one, okay. no one had anything to say. Okay. Um, so my question, Japes, is like, what do you know about evaluating a prompt? And there are two topics. So they're evaluating the prompts and evaluating a rack system. So like, um, what tell me what you know about how we can go about evaluating okay a book about how we go about, oh, wait a second just to, to repeat the question for javas how do you go about um evaluating a prompt or evaluating a lock system and like um and just let me know what you what is your understanding and what is like uh, the picture in your head uh, abu Bakr, go ahead okay so uh, i'm not sure actually the exact methodologies how it is implemented underlying so what i know is that uh, there are different metrics that we can use to evaluate so for example when we use ragas or like other evaluation metrics they use relevance so how relevant is the rug uh, from the retrieved document so clarity and also context alignment also for accuracy and the diversity of the uh, uh, evaluation so they are this those are the measured uh, things so i'm not sure the underlying implementation is proper Okay, uh, thank you, Abur. Yes, so, so yeah, these are like uh, considering Ragas in particular. 
Um, I think this was a good answer, uh, Gapes. Go ahead. Okay, so my understanding uh, for evaluating uh, RAG is that, for example, RAGAS, uh, we evaluate uh, the RAG system based on uh, the context uh, and also the ground truth and also the question. So uh, we'll have these three data sets. Maybe we can generate these data sets using the LLM. Then we have these three, uh, three uh, data set, not one data set with these three uh, uh, metrics, then we try to check the faithfulness uh, of the uh, answer. I think faithfulness is about the, if the factual accuracy of the answer uh, based on the context, and also we can check the context precision, how the answer and uh, the question or the answer is relevant to the question, uh, answer relevance and this kind of metrics we have. So we are going to check uh, that one, but I'm not really sure about the evaluating prompt. Uh, I have just some thoughts, but I'm not really sure. Hey, can you share the thoughts that you have in your head? Can you summarize just like what you have, the idea you have in your mind? Okay, so uh, for the prompt, what I'm thinking is for we, we can have different uh, prompts uh, in our data set, uh, which, which we think that it will, good, it will provide a good answer if it's given to the LLM. So we are going to evaluate this. So uh, what we can is we can use the RAC system to check our, uh, our prompts. So the, uh, like uh, uh, we can, uh, like using ragas, we can also check the prompts. Uh, like if we say the rag constant, uh, we can uh, give the prompt to the LLM and we can get answer. Then we can uh, check that answer with the uh, matrix that I mentioned before, the faithfulness or uh, the quest, uh, context precision and the other matrix. So we are changing the prompt and getting uh, an answer, then we can check the answer uh, using uh, RAGAS, if I'm clear. Well, this is a, an, a, a way to think about it, yes. So it's not, um, uh, it's not necessarily like, uh, there are like other ways to go about it, but yeah, this is still um, yeah, valid, I think, to to also go about it, to, to, to evaluate prompts, yes. So, what the Abu Bakr and Gapes said is, um, um, I mean, it's basically what we want to do. So the idea is that like we are, uh, in this challenge, you are like building a service that is going to be providing prompts uh, for your customers. And then you want to have some way of like saying like, uh, I'm going to get, I'm giving you a good prompt, but like, how can you, really support this statement how do you know that this is a good problem you have to do some kind of evaluation if you have uh, like a multiple candidates if you for example you automatically create prompts meaning that you go to for example uh, for to get ChatGPT and say like create a prompt for me for like um uh i don't know classification task and then like uh, ChatGPT will create for you a set of prompts. This is a valid uh, way to actually go about uh, creating prompts. Uh, uh, and then like, but from these created prompts, you don't know if like any of them is going to work well or not. So you have to have some way to evaluate it or to score them against each other, to score them and then like choose the one that scores better the best among them and return that as like your like chosen prompt. Um, okay, so uh, so just uh, let's let me start. Um, okay. So yeah, so this is like uh, the idea about prompt uh, prompt evaluation, uh, what I'm calling prompt evaluation, what is like also called in the challenge document um, 
from testing and um, what, is it, what is it called? Um, maybe. Uh, second, mix. From testing and ranking. Okay. Uh, okay, so just to see. Um, so, uh, let's close this one, guys. Okay, so you, you can see my screen, right? Uh, all right, great. So, yeah, you can stop me at any point if you feel like um, the explanation is too, like you are not following. Uh, stop me, please um like i have um re rewrote the content of this of this is this session um just um um just recently so it's like uh okay so it might be the organization might be a bit confusing so the content is going to be we're going to be there are two parts so we're going to be talking about the first part is going to be talking about from scoring and ranking and uh, and that include basically like how we go about scoring prompts and rank them basically on how how well they perform uh, and uh, that in that um, in that uh, subject there will be like uh, we have to have test cases because how we do how do we t we actually test the, our prompt we cannot just look at the prompt and decide that this prompt is good or not we have to create some test cases to 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 try them on there are metrics that we can like different metrics that we can be uh, used to score like the or to to decide what is the quality of to measure the quality of the prompt and um and just to to we are going to be looking uh examples on like two approaches to to do this uh, prompt scoring and ranking one is like uh, one um, automatically uh, automatically automatic prompt engineer which is like a, a method that was introduced in 2022 uh, 20, 2022 um and there they they actually building a system that uh, automatically use so they're using an llm to automatically generate prompt candidates and then they are again using prompt they are again using llm to score or to um, evaluate the prompts and like basically returning the best one and um, they get a um, uh, like a comparable performance and sometimes even better than what is done by a human prompt engineer so this is they call it automatic prompt engineer ape the second example we're going to be looking into prompt royale uh, so this is an application that is that like implementing uh, Monte Carlo matchmaking and LO ranking. So these are two methods that are um, referenced for in the challenge document. And you can see that like this, they have this application that is available. You can actually download it and use it. <laughs> Basically, um, that implements these two. The thing is, uh, you have to just understand how it works and like the kind of uh, thing that is. Um, I mean, uh, how how they, how they implement it is is is. Um, you just need to understand how that works. Uh, so again, in both cases, in these both cases, the prompts are automatically generated, meaning that an LLM is used to actually generate the prompt candidates, and then an LLM again is used to evaluate them. But how they score them and how they go about doing the actual um, comparison is different. Uh, so we'll be looking at these two uh, quickly, hopefully like, quickly, and like it's, it's still like um, showing the differences. Uh, and then in the second part, which is um, uh, separate, we're going to be looking at the evaluation of RAC system. So the RAC system, you know, is made of uh, several parts there is the retriever there is the generation part and um we're basically going to be looking at ragas 
again, RAGAS is an automatic way, is again using LLM to evaluate the RAG system. And they define metrics that basically look at the, uh, uh, the retriever and the, and, the, and the generation part separately. And they measure differences. So we're going to be looking at like uh, the, the to try to understand the metrics they, they use and like um, and how it works. So okay, so this is just the context I'm giving you an overview. Um, anything that sounds confusing or any questions so far? Like do you have like something that um, doesn't make sense? Am I using any kind of terminology that doesn't uh, you don't know? Okay, again, you can stop me at any point. I will appreciate it actually. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So we are talking about prompts first. So this has an intro here. Uh, the thing is that about prompts, uh, and we said this a multiple times again before, why there is there is a need for prompt engineering. Uh, why do we need to like? Uh, so the, the thing is that prompts, uh, these are natural language, um, and uh, LLMs have great understanding of natural language, but its understanding is different from what we understand. Like, we don't know how exactly um, LLMs understand the prompts and act on them. What we know is that from experience that a small change or some different prompts that for to us look similar because they have the same meaning, they the, the LLM would be like acting differently to them and um so we don't really know a priori like how would um the LLM re interact or like um, um <clears throat> what would be like how how it would be like um what would be the quality of the of the output given a prompt we, we don't know a priori so we kind of have to like we can we can think of LLMs as some kind of black box computer, so we don't know how it works inside. And um, so basically, as like maybe we talked about yesterday with Yababo, is that like uh, to evaluate the prompt, we have to actually put give the prompt to that LLM and look at the output. We cannot just look at the prompt by itself. Um, we have to look at the output and then evaluating the output compared to what we like uh, what, what we consider like the ground truth or whatever like we want the quality we want we can like uh, assign some quality to the prompt and of course we have to do that like for multiple test cases so so that like we can get some kind of uh, this is just generally um so okay uh the evaluation data set so the evaluation data set is usually going to be like um uh, as a, um, a set of input output so input to the pro so a prompt okay so a prompt can be um, some kind of a, a template like maybe it's a set, uh, like a, a template that takes a particular question from the user and and produces an output right um, let's say like we have a, um, like a prompt for translation let's say as the prompt for translation will be like is a generic prompt that we shall translate the following text from English to French, for example. And then there will be a text that is coming from the user that is in, in English uh, that has to be translated. So, uh, and then the output. So, or like uh, we um, like the um, the symbol is Q and A, like it's like a question and answer. I think like the prompt is something that like um, you have to add Q to the prompt and then uh, pass, it, pass them to the LLM and get A, the answer. Okay, so uh, the evaluation data set is going to be like a set of pairs of input and output without the prompt. Uh, so sorry so i i don't know it might be confusing so i should actually be using instruction instead of prompt because you know uh, a prompt is the whole thing that you pass to the llm right so let's say like um i'm going to be testing as an instruction q is a question so the instruction and q are going to be making the prompt and a is the output the evaluation that i said is made of q and a of course q can be an empty 
an empty string, so it's nothing. So it's the prompt is just the instruction is is just directly generating my answer. Um, okay, so the important point here is that we can actually automatically generate an evaluation data set by like maybe using a few short prompt, uh, may, basically telling the LLM, uh, please generate a uh, evaluation data set, uh, like a, a pair of input and output, um, given these examples, similar examples. Of course, we have to keep like a particular task in mind. Like they oh, my examples can be like translation examples for example, uh, or like anything else. I can be passing them to to the LLM, and then we're going to be getting this evaluation as well. Okay, this is the first part that we need to have. Uh, the second uh, thing is that we have to decide on what we are going to use the scoring function. So the scoring function is a measure of the quality of the prompt. Uh, and it's 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 going to measure the quality of the prompt by measuring basically the alignment between the data set and the data the model generates using the our chosen prompt. Okay. Examples of function uh, scoring function is like execution accuracy and log probability. So I'm going to explain this in a, in the next uh, part. Uh, but any questions so far? Did I confuse you in how I explain this? in any way um, okay I'm going just to trust you to stop me if you if it's confusing even though you have never done that before but okay so a scoring what is the scoring function um, well like I'm defining a scoring function as a function that takes an instruction R the um, as an input Q and the output A and uh, like give me like some numerical value, okay? So again, given a data set of Q and A, the goal of prompt scoring is usually to find a single instruction R. So this is a general like goal, um, overall goal is that like we want to have an instruction R that when the model is prompted using the, the putting R and Q together, passing them to the model M, we want to get the response A with like a high um, reli um, reliability or a high like a uh, high probability basically. So this is usually the, the overall goal. We want to get a great, a great instruction, a great R, a great, uh, I'm calling it prompt, but it's, um, yeah, because we are like uh, taking an input from the user here as Q, so it, it, I'm calling it an instruction, but it's um, basically um, what I want to find is the best R I can find uh, that we, uh, given the data set, it's the one that is more reliably is going to be when taking, when it is passed to the model with Q, it's going to give me the correct answer or the, what the expected or desired answer, okay? So one uh, example of a scoring function is an execution ac accuracy. And what does that, what does, what does it mean or what, how, how it is defined? It just like, um, it's a score of zero or one, okay? And you get zero if like the output of the model um, is exactly A, you get one. If it's not exactly A, you get zero. Or like a, you can measure like exactly A or like a similar, like maybe semantically similar to A, you get one. If it's not like um, enough, like a, there is like a threshold of semantic similarity. Uh, if it's that semantically similar to A, the, the output is that uh, like um, with some kind of, uh, of, of criteria is similar to A, you decide that the, this um the value is one if it's not the value is zero so you just have a binary um values and you can just like sense that because there is only binary values zero and one i'm not getting really um any kind of nonce in in in, in my measurement so this is just a simple uh, scoring function um you can use this of course there is another like a uh, possibility again is to use the log probability instead uh, of using a zero and one value. 
So here it's like uh, you define the scoring function as the probability of, uh, of A appearing in the output uh, of the model given the, the particular instruction R. So um, basically what you will get here is going to be the log probability. And this is like uh, usually what you get from uh, your LLMs, not the, um, basically you can, yeah, you can, you can get that from, 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 uh, from the, from the LLM basically, yes, the, the generation. Okay, so yeah, so is this anything not clear here? Like these are just two examples. Um, is it clear? Like, uh, do you get the idea? It's not necessarily get the mathematical formula, but okay, so. Uh, yeah, so just uh, talking about this to 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 uh, um yeah so scoring functions those kind of scoring functions and uh, like um we have like is all the elements that are were used in the ape the automatic prompt engineer and um so just talking about this uh, um uh, Actually, let me just see if I have. Sorry. Yeah. So this is a paper. This is a paper. Um. Okay. So it's like um. It's it's long, but like um. You can just go through the beginning if you if you just want to understand this in details. So the idea of the um, of the algorithm, I'm not going to go in so much details, but like uh, as they also have like a, a repo that you can actually look at and use <laughs> their algorithm. Um, the thing is, um, so they so the the idea like what is what is ape is an algorithm that uses LLMs to generate and select instructions automatically. So the LLMs is doing two things here. They are generating the instruction candidates and selecting the best one from from um, among them. Okay, and is doing the two things. So um, they address it as a black box optimi optimization problem. They treat, they have an LLM as an inference model to generate the prompt candidates based on a set of uh, like a small set of demonstrations so you give it a, a couple of examples and then going to create a set of candidates uh, this is the first part of the algorithm and then uh, it will go on and uh, use another LLM basically it will pass the instruction with um, the, like we have a, like a test data set or training data set in this case um, because yeah Okay, you can follow the training data set uh, here. But basically, we have a data set um, of test cases and the instructions we got from the first step. You pass them through an LLM and you go through computing the, uh, the score for each and comparing the scores from prompts. And basically, in the end, you're going to you to choose like your best instruction. Here they're calling the instruction row. So they call the best instruction is the one that gives you the maximum score, which is basically uh, the expectation over all your test data or your training data uh, of like uh, of the, the score function. So they just give getting the the instruction, the output of the algorithm is the instruction that gets you the, the maximum score. Um, okay. So these are like how the algorithm itself, we can actually look at it here in the paper. So, so here they define their, their algorithm here. 
So you start with a training uh, data set. Okay, so they have n pairs of uh, from input output. You have a scoring function. They use like um, the basically the, the log probability uh, that we have defined. Um, they use an LLM to uh, get a, um, um, a sample of instructions. So row one to row M, so M proposals for instruction. And then they basically go, so what they do here is they do, instead of like computing um, the whole, uh, the scores of each prompt for each uh, pair, so we can calculate the score for each pair. Sorry. Um, the algorithm as I defined it is it's supposed to compute the score for each prompt over each uh, uh, example in your in your training data set but this if you have like um like you know it's going to be computationally expensive or actually costly but just because if you are using like a open open ai model it's going to be costing you money to do that so instead of doing it like that you have there are they are using some efficient computation and what they do is that they choose only a subset of the training data set and they measure like um the score of all the, the they are like proposal in this um, instruction proposals over this training data set and from the instruction um set they cho they choose only the best the best performing so they choose a subset of their instructions their prompts so they choose a subset of their prompts these are the promising ones and they continue with those instead of like going over the whole uh, the whole set uh, during the computation so basically um yes so is there a question okay anyway so what they do is that basically they uh, at the, they do the computation in stages such that they don't need to do the whole all the scoring computations you know the score is uh, computing the score is actually just like passing the prompt to the llm with uh, with the data point the q and getting an output and measuring what is the log probability of the desired output from there so the computation of the score i'm saying is just like uh, passing the prompt to passing a prompt to the llm that is uh, like uh, this is a computation and because that is costly they instead of doing all all instructions or over all data sets they only they do it, it in in stages and choose only the best performing um uh instructions to continue the computation with um so yeah and in the end they will once they start to like uh once the once this algorithm starts to converge uh you'll get um your instruction the best one the best prompt you'll get this out of it and um okay so yeah okay so we, we have not on half time so let me just stop talking about this one there is uh you can look at their repo and see like uh just like how they do um like different things i wanted to see like um Like you can see their prompts that they use for the evaluation and like uh, for the generation here. So you can understand how it works. So let me just not, um, and they actually like, they have it also in the paper. So uh, like what is the prompts they use? Uh, so this is a general idea. So um, I talked about here the efficient score estimation. The thing is that uh, because this is like, making the computation efficient is important to reduce the, the, um, the, the cost 
that's why like also in this uh, prompt royale basically this approach also focuses on making the computation um uh, efficient as well so here in prompt royale uh, they start by like um um they create again they also create prompt uh, um, candidates uh, automatically using an llm they create test cases again automatically using an llm so the same way that it was done for eight before but the thing is that what they do instead of like um uh computing the score over like uh, uh of, of the prompt over a, a data point like passing the prompt with a data point to the to the LLM, what they do, data point is I mean is a queue like uh, the question they pass together to the to the LLM. What they do is that they create matchups between match uh, match matches or duels between two prompts. So it's like <laughs> it's a royale. So it's a comp uh, it's a competition and um uh so they use a monte carlo matchmaking which one like basically uh you you, you make your matches based on like um, the the most the best uh, performing uh, prompt is going to be like more likely to be chosen to for to to match to actually like go through like a a, a duel and so basically it is it will have more probability to be moving uh, through the, com the competition and you uh, like uh, they are using a low rating to to calculate um, the rates the ranking of each uh, prompt depending on how they do uh, so uh, okay so here are like what you see here there are three uses of LLM to create the prompt the prompts candidate uh, the prompt candidates using an LLM, you create the test case uh, using an LLM, and the the matching between two prompts is also done by the LLM. What you, what you do is that like you pass the prompt for the LLM to the LLM, you get an output, you pass the second prompt to the LLM, and you get uh, um, an output, and you ask using a, a prompt, uh, you ask the LLM, an LLM to actually choose the better the one that is doing better the, like it's looking at the output of the two prompts and telling you like which one is doing better and basically deciding which one is the winner and uh, based on that you like um, the algorithm is going to be updating the ranking of the of the prompts as long as you go through the data set and go to the match or the matches until you get uh, like a clear winner in the end uh just to like here uh i don't know if there is enough time to go through all of this but yeah so this is what i already said so the monte carlo method is going to be just choosing that like drawing for a dual two uh two uh prompts that have like um the probability of them being drawn is proportional to their chances to of it being best so it's based on their ranking um of course when you start you initialize the ranking all to be equal but after um a, a period of like a few um, matching is then going to have like uh, the rates and uh, the ranking is going to be updated and some are going to be clear clearly better than the others so those are going to be like being chosen more and more um so this is what's already talked talk, talked about so the dual is like uh, use a separate prompt to evaluate the output of the two prompts um so the error rank error ranking is just like uh, it's a system for like uh, calculating um a relative level of players in any zero of some game so it was actually first uh, 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 developed for um, ranking uh, chess players uh, and basically it, it, it gives like uh, the rating for each player as if it's like um, as the rating is like a distribution a normal distribution is a particular um, like a, a particular no, um, particular mean mu and uh, standard deviation 
and basically um, the difference in rating between two players is a prediction of like um, how would they score in if they they match in if they like battle together the difference in rating predicts what is out uh, outcome of the match uh, after the game the actual score that you get is is going to be used uh, to like update the the rating basically so um if you start with like a if you start with two players that have equal rating, they will have like um, expect you will expect that they will have equal score, uh, uh, like or equal numbers of wins. The end. Um, just one moment. Excuse me. One I'm sorry. The thing is that, um, okay, so we have my, uh, so I, I'm just talking about like, this is just about error rank ranking. It's, um, uh, um, so it's just like, um, a method for like, uh calculating that like um giving each player some rank depending on how well they like um, how many wins lo losses and draws they had uh, throughout so uh, like the rating of each player is updated after uh, like can be updated after each game basically so for example like um uh as I said, like there is a first lo looking at the rating of two players, you have an expectation of like the outcome of the match. But after the actual outcome, you if the actual outcome doesn't match what you expected, you have to update your rating basically. So if you have like two players, for example, and one is like much uh, a high rated player against uh, a low rated player, and they match, like they are like playing against each other. Of course, you expect that the high rated uh, player is going to win. And you actually have an actual numerical value for, for like this expectation. So if after in the match, the actually the low rated player wins, so it's an upset win, uh, the, then you have to basically change your rating, meaning you have to increase the rating of the low rated player because they are better than what you expected and you have to lower the rating of your uh, of a high rated player because they actually um say you you are overestimating their 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 rank and uh, the low rated player you have you have been underestimating their rank basically that's what you do so uh, the the system basically of this this elo ranking system is like a self adjusting um Okay, so there is actual computation that you can do, that you do actually. And um, so you update. Uh, so first, like, let me look at the expected score given the rating um, of two players A and B. So I'm just looking at the formula down here that it's just one over one plus 10 to the power of mu A minus mu, mu P. So mu A is the rating basically of player a mu b is the rating of player b and divided by two sigma so i'm using mu and sigma because actually this algorithm or this system assumes that the distribution is a new uh, normal distribution so there is a mu the mean and sigma is the standard deviation of the normal distribution but uh, in in practice this is will be the rating of player a this is the rating of player b um the expected score is going to be a value from from between zero and one the expected score uh this is a against b um expected score for b against a is going to be the complement of this so it's one minus this one um so it's like a 
simple uh, arithmetic, but um, I like you can just believe me as for a second. And what you do after like each game is that like you update. So you start with the rating for player A, you update it to a new value, mu dash. I'm sorry that the, the, the screen looks a little bit blurry. Um, but okay, so you update it to a new value, which is like uh, basically the score, the actual score minus the expected score. So, uh, and then you multiply it by some uh, K factor here. So there is an N, so just like uh, the N, ignore the N for a moment. There is a K factor, just a factor that is multiplying here uh, and it controls how, how fast or how slow you want to update your rating. So it's a choice. Um, you can choose something between like 10, 20, or like 24, depending. Um, mm. Here, like uh, usually, like uh, you start with uh, all the players. So we are starting with, so players for us are prompts, of course. So I was talking about players in general, but the players there are here are prompts. We start all of them with the same rank because we haven't played anything yet. So we give them all a rating of 1,000. And uh, we start with a standard deviation of 350. Um, and basically, we go through like uh, this uh, matchup using Monte Carlo. Uh, after each match, so the match will be what? Passing the two prompts through an LLM, getting an output, and then asking an LLM to choose which one did better, uh, the, uh, like measuring by its output. The the LLM will give me. I can ask it to give me like. Uh, like uh, okay which uh, which one is the winner the winner will get a score of one the loser will get a score of zero and um of course the expected score is something between zero and one already uh okay it's one half if they have the same rating of course and then i'm going to start updating their rating and going forward after each match is going to be updated in that in that way i will choose a number of matching I, I like in my algorithm, like I say, like I want 60 match matches. And then after that, after the end, I will choose my player, the prompt that had the highest rating as my winner overall. Okay, so this is the general idea. Um, anyone has any questions? You can say I didn't understand anything. That's fine. I think so. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Free. You, you just need like an open AI key, so they don't provide that. But uh, let me actually, if I can, did I link for it? Yeah, somewhere. So I'm sorry that like um yeah. So I think uh, yeah, basically. Here you can choose it. You can have to pass your open AI key, API key. Um, actually, I was trying to, to do that, I think, earlier. So I put mine here. And uh, what you do is that you start by, um, maybe you can watch the demo they have here. Uh, OK, so you can see my screen, right? Yeah, so what they do, like you have these options, you enter like the description for what you want the prompt for. So this is exactly doing kind of what you want to do with the prompt generation part, right? So for example, here the example they're giving is that they are, uh, sorry, let me just go back. So they're going to be creating, uh, headline for a user website so this is what they want their prompt to be like this is a task they want to create a prompt for um and then they were going to generate this test cases here and first they will give like uh, the number of test cases they want to generate so these are automatically generated um 
of course you can provide your own example for like uh, uh, like provide examples so that uh, the model will use them as uh, like in a few short prompting kind and uh, okay so you see here like they cho he they chose the number of prompts candidate candidates so it was 10 i think 10 right and you'll see in a moment how they going to so they going to create the prompt candidates um i don't know if you can see and yeah they started the battle so you start i don't know if it's like very clear i don't know you can just go to the the website and check it yourself just to see like uh, it works what is happening here is that the rating is changing after each uh, iteration and these are the ratings of each um a prompt so you see it started at, at 1000 because that's what they set it at at the beginning and like um here like you see they are like um are like changing and getting separated after each iteration and when the end you get a part a clear winner uh the the, the prompt with the highest rate had the highest rating uh so we can look at uh, okay so yeah so this is the repo and uh okay this is a one so i to show you the prompts they're using to generate the candidate prompts and you can see the prompts they here the, this is a prompt they are using to generate the candidates you can look at it how your job is to generate system prompts for gpt4 so this is the, the model they're using and more why like it's not working for me but anyway uh i think they what else so this is a prompt for for prompt this is for candidate prompt generation then there is one for ranking the prompt uh, so you see that the prompt is your job is to rank the quality of two output generated from different prompts the prompt is used to generate a response from a, for a given task or right till the end of it okay and then there is another one for creating test cases and it has examples uh what else so these are the three like uh, we said like there are three uses of llm here they are the prompts that are used um yeah i'm sorry that i'm not going through the actual code of how to do the monte carlo matching matchmaking and hello uh, but you can find that in the references it's they are like simple enough to implement um if you want to to write them yourself uh okay any questions again you are allowed to say i don't get it or maybe it's like maybe you get everything and everything is simple enough. Any 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 questions? I know I'm already over time, but uh, we have to just I I want to go over like um. yeah go ahead yeah so my my initial question was uh it will we are for us to evaluate the let's say even for monte carlo you have to okay let's say for elo rating you have to have a score that you'll compare with the other score for the other prompt and uh but my question is like how how do you get a score for that specific prompt um for example, I've seen the uh, the one that you've shared uh, just before you stop sharing uh, default tracking uh, a prompt to tell the 
prompt shell GPT to rank two prompts. Yeah. Um, yeah, is is that a case like will GPT give us the uh, can can like can we use GPT to give us the uh two the two scores for the for the prompts you are comparing? Uh, yes, so the thing is that you are not actually give, asking it to give you a score, you are just asking it to choose which one is better. And the depending on like the one that it chooses that is better that it's going to get a score of one for like for the game so it's winning and the one that is uh, losing gets zero that's uh like what's happening here okay um yeah that is clear thank you uh, but now for like um uh, the uh do you pass in also the context because now um or is it going to just see the way the prompt is written? Or um, what? 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 Did, what does it do, like, for for us to get to get the winner between the two? Do we? Uh, does it generate an answer, or do it just tell? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So what? What is pass? What you are passing is um, not the prompt alone. What you are passing actually is the prompt first. You're passing the prompt to an LLM and getting an output, okay? And of course, you already have, a, you have a, a test data set, so you have a desired output, okay? You, you have already like a, 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 the ground truth, let's say. Uh, yes, Hilary? Yeah, so like for the ground truth, uh, uh, Earlier, we were saying that the ground truth uh, we generate for for the test cases. Um, so uh, the, the other time, like when you generate test cases, if you say like five test cases, you'll have five questions, answers, uh, you know, five questions and ground truths for those, and then to evaluate the rug. But if you're talking about the prompts you've generated, you won't use the test cases because you are uh, you won't find like your question included in the test case, so you'll have to generate a ground fruit for, for that specific prompt. Uh, uh, sorry, so okay, I, I don't know if like um, uh, maybe just like uh, taking an example here. Um, let's see, can this uh. Uh, okay, so um, I, I'm I'm not sure if I get like what is confusing you exactly, but um, maybe let's uh, let me share my screen first. Sorry, yes. Um, so let's look at here. So yeah, okay. Let's, um, this is the example they provide actually in their demo, right? So the task I, I want to create a great prompt for is writing, um, is a prompt that creates a headline for a website. Okay, this is my task. This is like, for example, you like um, a, a user, uh, like is it for, the, for the, this week challenge, you can a, a user can come to you with this kind of task asking for a prompt that will work great for it okay so this is the definition of the task itself the test cases will be uh, a set of uh, uh, like kinds of uh, websites and the generated headline so like this would be like the <coughs> so again when i say prompts uh, the prompts that we are trying uh, so sorry yeah, um, I see, can see what the confusion is coming from. Uh, okay, so I use like prompt and uh, instruction interchangeably, which is wrong because the instruction is only a part of the prompt. So like um, like uh, the prompt can be made of an instruction, an input, and a context, right? Um, these are all everything that you pass to. To the to the LLM in the end is called as a whole is, is a prompt. 
but you can divide your part is as uh, like an instruction input uh, like a, like a instruction can be like a, for open ai terminology is a system maybe the system message and um, you can get like uh, the input will be the user message and of course the output is a system message right this is for the, the, the chat okay is it um yeah okay so yeah so these are scenarios yes and the desire i desired like our example output so you can see like uh, here uh, like a website for a car dealership and the output from the whole prompt that is going to be made is going is like um this is the desired output is like find the car for of your dream at the best price so this is just a headline um so yeah and this is all the test examples are like this so uh think of your in your mind that you want to find the instruction the great instruction that you pass together with this input and get uh an output that is like this one okay this is the idea this is what you look for and then you can see like the here the, the algorithm generated automatically some examples some candidate instructions so just reading one like imagine you are a creative copywriter tasked with crafting a catchy and engaging headline for a website Website could be for any type of business organization, such as a little store, non-profit, blah, blah, blah. So this is an example. Uh, remember, the goal is to pick interest and encourage people to explore the website further. So this is one kind of instruction. So in the actual match, what will happen is that you will pass the prompt, this one, the instruction, sorry, you'll pass the instruction together with the input for the scenario and get some output, okay? And then, uh, of course, the, because it's a match, you're going to be passing two prompts. Uh, so the second one will be, like if say you take this instruction, you pass it together with the same input and get some output. So you're not getting this one, of course, you're getting some output. And what you do for evaluation, you're, you are showing like your LLM, I have like this prompt that produce this, output another prompt that produces output compared to this ground truth which one did better and the, the llm is going to give you an answer like a prompt one or prompt two okay and that that will be your score is this like uh, clear now yes it's clear uh, it's uh, it's very clear now because i i was assuming the test cases that uh are like a prompt and uh, and ground truth for it um so uh, yeah i'm getting now that there are scenarios thank you okay okay great yeah so yeah I, like maybe it's the terminology okay it's not barely enough time so okay let's move on to evaluating the rags um so yeah so the difficulty in evaluating the rag is that it's made of different components and evaluating each one of them could be like um there are multiple considerations to take into account there are multiple things that you can actually evaluate for so like um, for example you can at least divide your system to retriever and generation and then look at um like a great retriever system is the one that will give you the relevant and focused context given your like um, query and uh, the generation system is the one that will like if it's a great it's going to be it's it's getting the context uh, from the retriever system so uh, a great generation is the one that will uh, generation system is going to be giving you quality generation and like uh, ability to use the context um, uh, tastefully so tastefully this is like uh, let's talk about it in a, minute, a moment so we're going to be talking about ragas there are different frameworks and approaches there is Ares, for example is also similar to ragas um the other approaches um okay sharing my screen is sorry 
So um, RAGES is the Trigger Argumented Generation Assessment, assessment is the framework reference-free, so it's completely dependent on uh, LLMs, is not using any kind of annotated data. Um, again, like everything that we looked through so far, um, so uh, they have a set of metrics that evaluate each uh, of the components or uh, on a, a few dimensions, like a few um, aspects. Um, it's, um, it's faster, it's fast and cheaper way, let's say, because like annotating data is expensive. So creating everything autom uh, like automatically could be cheaper way to go. Um, it's also like Ragas is integrated with Lama Index and with long chain, so you can use it directly within the, uh, there. So it's like, um, it's uh, super com convenient in this way. Uh, okay, so like uh, we, can, we can discuss three kinds of metrics, the faithfulness, answer relevance and context relevance. Um, I'm sorry if it's, uh, it's noisy around me. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I don't know if you can hear the noise, but um, okay. Uh, okay, so just to think about this, um, consider you have a rack setting, you have a query or question queue. A system first retrieves some context C of Q, and then uses the retrieve context to generate the answer like uh, A or A S of Q. So these are just like um because I want to like discuss the actual like uh, computations. Uh, that's why like I'm, I'm referencing those. Uh, okay. So what is the faithfulness? Faithfulness is about that the generation. So faithfulness is a, is a, is a metric for the generation system. And it's about that, like it's measuring how well or that the generation part doesn't hallucinate. It's not answering from its own, um, like uh, it's not making up answers. It's actually using the context to answer the question. Um, so this is what is measuring. What is measuring here? Uh, the score is like uh, what it does is that is um, so uh, how the evaluation works. Of course, you have your access system already, right? So you pass your query queue and get the context C of Q and an answer, right? So the evaluation, what it does is that it takes the answer and breaks it down into several, several statements, okay? And evaluate the statements, meaning they see look at each statement and make sure that this statement is coming from the context. It's not coming from somewhere else. The, the generation system didn't make this up. They are all uh, are, are extracted from the context. Um, so it's making sure of that. So you, they use a prompt. They actually ask an LLM to do this kind of evaluation. So they say, like, given the question and answer, that so also are passing the question and the answer uh, and cre create one or more statement from each sentence. So this is the first part, the creating the, the, the statements. And then, so, they break down the answer using LLM. They use an LLM to verify again. So I consider the context and the following statements and um, give us like a, a verdict of yes or no that the statement is coming from the context. And you pass them the statements here. And what you get is going to, you are going to be getting like, um, um for each statement you're going to get a value for, of zero or one basically or uh, or like um verified or not and what you the score you count in the end is that the number of the verified statements the statements that are coming from the context divided by the number of statements so this is a value is going to be between zero and one the higher the score the more faithful the generation system is meaning if you get one, that means everything in the answer is coming from the context. If you are getting zero, that means the, the whole answer is made up. It doesn't have anything to do with the context. 
Um, yeah, so these are the two steps. This is how it is measured. Again, you can see each step is using LLM. Um, okay, another thing is the answer relevance. As again, this is a, a measurement of how um, uh, how well, like uh, how relevant is the answer from the generation. So this is how the generation system is work, uh, like is performing. Is it answering the question? Actually, and is this is this point is not like uh, we are not we don't care about that the answer is correct. We care that it is relevant. So um, so even if it's like it is wrong, at least it is answering it in a way that like uh, completely. So it's not ignoring any part of the question and it doesn't have any extra information that is not necessary. So it penalizes like uh, incomplete answers are the information. Again, what you do, what the, uh, okay, so this is explanation of how it works. Um, just to give you an understanding of like what you are measuring and how it works, just it's all like uh, here up front um, uh, is used. And so how they do this is kind of clever. It's just like, uh, so you, again, you get a query queue, you get um, an, uh, a context CFQ and an answer um from the generation system a of q so this like this this uh actually this this metric only cares about q and um and the answer so it's not like uh, about um different from the faithfulness from before what it does is that they take the answer you get from the llm and they pass the answer to to an llm with a prompt generate a question for the given answer so they uh, and then they compare the question they get from this with the original question and measure the similarity and if this is, is similar basically they get the answer relevance if they are if the 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 generic question and the original question are similar that means the answer actually was relevant to the question if they are not similar that means that the the answer was like like a have had something um unrelated uh and this is like how they measure this again this is the value between zero and one here they are using to measure the similarity they are using um uh, in the embedding uh, basically they are measuring the cosine similarity between two uh with between the two questions so they're using like one of this open AI text embedding at uh, 002 for doing that. Um, last thing uh, is the context relevance. This is a measurement of how well the retriever works. Uh, and this is like, uh, you want to see if you are getting, um, given the query, is the context you get back relevant uh, to, to the query? And is it like doesn't have any other noise? Like it's focused. It doesn't have any relevant information. And you know this is like remember that the retriever have like uh, before like uh, the retriever part. You have chunking and loading and all of this stuff will affect the performance of this. So it might be if you are getting noising a noise uh, in your uh, if you are getting bad. Uh, output for this context relevance. Uh, if you're getting noise, it might be your chunking. It's like your chunking is too big, uh, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to like um, again. They are using again the LLM to to measure this. Uh, they take the context and um, and the question and uh, like. Um, Given the question and the context, the LLM extracts a subset of sentences from the context uh, that are crucial for the answer, and then uh, basically calculate that, like uh, how many of like like the, the the ratio between the total number of ten sentences and the ones that are relevant to get the, the score. So the score again is between zero and one, and one means that the, the the retrieve the context is really, really focused and relevant if you are getting like um 
a, a small a small value that means like there are redundant or irrelevant information in your in your question there are other metrics but uh, we can stop here because there are really over time um so any questions again um I know this was theoretical, so I like because like um, implementing those actually is not hard. You just need to understand how they work, um, like the inner mechanisms. So of course uh, you probably already done this, but you have to go through like uh, ragas and like they explain like uh, uh, these. Um, these concepts as well here, the metrics they had, the metrics they have, like um, as a relevancy, there is this precision that we didn't talk that we didn't talk about the context of call as well. But like um, it's um, it, you can go over them and like uh, the use cases then is like um, how to how to use it is like simple basically how to generate the synthetic test and how to evaluate based on, based on it. So um, anyway, yeah. Um, any any questions? Is it take like uh, maybe we have a chance for one question? Maybe it will be better. All right, um, so let's maybe let's stop here because we have a, another tutorial that will let you go. Um.